Hero of the Rail. It was a beautiful summer day on the island of Sodor. The fields were full of flowers and the birds sang sweetly in the trees. Thomas felt very happy as he quietly filled up with water. Suddenly, there was a whoosh and a clickety clack as a silver blur, um, excuse me, blur roared past him. Fizzling fireboxes, peeped Thomas. What was that? Later that day, Spencer thundered up the track to Nafford Station. All the edges realized to have been roaring around the island. <clears throat> I'm here for the summer, Spencer puffed smugly. I have a very important job to do. The Duke and Duchess of Foxford are having a new summer house built. It has to be finished in time for their holiday. Cinders and ashes, puffed Thomas. Having Speedy spent on summer for one day is bad, but the whole summer? That will be terrible. Tell me about it, Thomas. During the next few days, Spencer was very rude to the other engines. He forced his way onto Gordon's express line. He told Toby he was too old to be useful, and he even called Thomas a tiny toy tank engine. Whew! This was too much. Thomas told Spencer he could pull loads just as heavy as his. So Spencer challenged Thomas to a race around Sodor. They would haul equal loads and see who would who could go faster. The engines met at the shunting yards at dawn. A whistle wailed and the race was on. Thomas and Spencer pumped their pistons as they whooshed along the tracks. As Thomas sped down a big hill, his brakes broke. He rolled faster and faster. He came to an old stretch of overgrown track that he'd never been, oh, excuse me, that he'd never seen before and crashed through the bushes. Finally, he slowed to a stop and then he heard a noise. Ooh. Hello, my name is Hero, a strange voice said. There was a very old engine in the bushes. He was rusty and broken. At first, Thomas wanted to roll away as fast as his wheels could carry him. But then he realized that Hero was kind and gentle. Hero told Thomas he had come to Sodor for a... Excuse me. That he had come to Sodor a long, long time ago. He had been one of the first steam engines on Sodor and had been known as Master of the Railway. But Hero had broken down and there had been no parts on Sodor to fix him with. He waited for parts to come from his home island, but the parts had never arrived. He was forgotten. Thomas said he would go get Sir Topham Hatt to help. No! Hero cried. You can't do that. You know what happens to old engines that aren't really useful anymore. They're sent to the smelting yard. Thomas decided to help his new friend in secret. I promise I'll make you really useful again. Later, Thomas had his brakes repaired at the Sodor Steamworks. He liked the hustle and bustle there and he especially liked Victor, who managed the whole place. I kind of like Victor myself. Thomas wanted to tell everyone about Hero, but he knew he had to keep quiet. As Thomas chucked away, he spotted an old engine part that Kevin the Crane had dropped. This will be good for Hero, he thought, and puffed away excitedly. The next day, Thomas did his work quickly, then sped out to visit Hero. As he neared Nero's hut, excuse me, sorry, as he neared Hero's hiding place, Thomas made a terrible discovery. Cinders and ashes, he peeked. The Duke and Duchess's summer house is right next to Hero's hiding place. Spencer will be here every day. 
Thomas knew he had to be careful. Just then, Spencer steamed around the bend. What are you doing here? he asked. I think you're up to something. Thomas didn't answer. He just shoved away nervously. Uh-oh. Thomas knew he couldn't do his work and repair Hero on his own. So he went to Percy and told him everything. Of course I'll help, Percy Pete. What can I do? Will you take this tractor to farm a coal for me? Thomas asked. Percy was excited about helping Thomas, but first he had to find a place to hide his mail truck. He would deliver the mail after he took care of the tractor for Thomas. Percy found an old siding to hide the mail trucks in, then went off with the tractor. But the tractor was so heavy that Percy popped a valve. Percy had to be repaired at the Sodor Steamworks. And in all the excitement, he forgot where he had hidden the mail truck. Uh-oh. Back at Tim Sheds, Sir Topham Hat was very cross that Percy had lost his mail truck. His voice boomed through the station from the, top, from the top to the tracks. I'm sorry, sir, Thomas Peep. I can help Percy find them tomorrow. Thomas's friends knew something strange was going on, so he told them all about Hero. Gordon gasped. James jumped. They had never heard such an amazing story. The next morning, Thomas was a really useful engine. He huffed and puffed, and he never stopped to rest his axle. And the whole time, he knew Spencer was following him. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. If Spencer was going to follow him all day, he could lead that nosy engine away from Hero. That, meant, that would mean all the other engines would be free to, re to help repair him. And that's why he's Twilight's number one engine. The next day, Thomas and Percy looked for the mail trucks as far away from Hero as possible. They puffed out to the quarry, with Spencer sneaking behind them the whole way. When they got there, Mavis wouldn't leave Spencer alone. What an honor, she puffed. Let me take you around the quarry. As she tore the quar as he toward the quarry, Spencer biffed a hopper. Slade and Dust showered down and blocked his funnel. Edward and Edward had to pull him to the works to be repaired. With Spencer at the works, Thomas thought it was a good time to take his friends to visit Hero. Hero liked meeting the other engines. He enjoyed Emily's stories and admired James's shiny red paint. Well, doesn't everybody? But making all these new friends reminded him of his old friends back home, which made him sad. Don't worry, Thomas peeped. Tomorrow, Percy will bring the last part. Then you'll be ready, and you won't be alone anymore. The next morning... Spencer found Percy's missing mail truck near Hero's hiding place. These must be part of Tricky Thomas's tricks. He huffed, then raced back to Nafford Station to find Sir Topham Hat. Spencer, why did you take Percy's mail trucks? Sir Topham Hat demanded. I didn't take. Sir Topham Hat wasn't interested in Spencer's excuses. He just wanted Spencer to return the trust to Percy and get back to his work on the summer house. Spencer was mad. I won't let Thomas get away with this. Uh-oh. Thomas and Hero were waiting for Percy to bring the very last part. Hero was very excited. His firebox flared and his steam swirled. But then they heard Spencer coming down the track. I found you, he huffed. Hero, you can puff away from him, Thomas Steen. Let's go! With a heaving huff, Hero tried to race away, but without the missing part, his pistons couldn't pump. His engine juddered and jittered, 
Metal parts popped off him, and he sputtered to a stop. Spencer laughed. Is this what you've been doing, Thomas? Making a heap of scrap for the smelting yard? Sir Topham, that will make sure he's sent there. As Spencer steamed away, Thomas felt terrible. Everything he had promised Hero was ruined. He knew he had to find Sir Topham Hat before Spencer did. Oh, I hate, I don't know how to say this, but go Thomas! Thomas and Spencer had the race of their lives. They steamed through tunnels and roared around bends. But as they crossed over a marsh, Spencer realized he was too heavy for the old track. It creaked and cracked. Then the mighty Spencer slid into the muddy marsh. Not very mighty, are you now, Spencer? Thomas promised Spencer he'd get help. At Napford Station, Thomas found Sir Topham Hat with the Duke and Duchess. Thomas's wheels wobbled as he told them all about Hero. Sir Topham Hat was shocked. You mean you found the master of the railway? He's terribly famous, exclaimed the Duchess. Why didn't you come to me sooner? Sir Topham Hat asked Thomas. I was worried, so I tried to do it all alone. Thomas peeped. Well, you're not alone anymore, said Sir Topham Hat. We must help Hero at once. A few days later, all the engines went to see Hero at the Sodor Steamworks. When he puffed up the track, they couldn't believe their eyes. He looked wonderful, as good as new. Welcome back, Master of the Railway, said Sir Topham Hat. All the engines blew their whistles. Now go get Spencer out of the mud, Sir Topham Hat said. Together with Rocky and Thomas, Hero pulled Spencer from the mud. Spencer couldn't believe how shiny and new Hero was. I'm sorry I thought you were a tricky engine, Thomas, puffed Spencer. And I'm sorry I called you a heap of scrap, Hero. With a mighty heave and haul, Hero pulled Spencer all the way to the works. Spencer, Thomas, and Hero puffed and puffed and worked together on the summer house. The Duke and Duchess arrived for their holiday just as it was finished and they were delighted. Later, as they were resting their axles, Thomas noticed that Hero was sad. What's the matter, Hero? Thomas asked. You have been very kind, the best friend I could ever have, Hero huffed. But I want to go home. Thomas knew who could help Hero, and he went to find Sir Topham Hatt at Napper Station. Sir, I need your help, he said. Hero wants to go home. He misses his friends and his island. Thomas, you were right to ask me, Sir Topham Hat said. Tell Hero not to worry. A few days later, all the engines gathered at Brendam Docks to say goodbye to Hero. Flags and garlands fluttered in the breeze. It was time for Hero to go home. I will never forget what you did for me, Hero said to Thomas, and I'll never forget you. Soto will always be your home too, Hero, Thomas puffed happily. As Hero shoved slowly to the ship, all the engines whistled farewell to their friend, the Master of the Railway. The End Well, overall, what I think about this movie is awesome. I like speed and that that had a lot of races in it and I love racing. But most of all I like the way Thomas and his friends helped Hero. That's where the origin of the name Steam Team came from. Well, this is Rainbow Dash saying that I love Hero the Rails without a doubt. And good night folks.